acids and bases commonly react with each other in what's referred to as a neutralization reaction. So an acid reacts with a base to form water and a salt. So that's kind of the generic part of this that you should know. Acid plus base reacts to form water and a salt. Um, so the idea here is that the acid donates the proton to the OH, which is most commonly going to be there with the base. Um, so the acid donates the proton to the OH, that forms water, that's where the HOH comes from. And then the salt is going to be this MA, that M stands for metal, and then the A stands for an anion. That's the generic um, writing of this here. So a more um, specific reaction we could look at here. So if we say write the balanced equation for the reaction of nitric oxide, or sorry, of nitric acid with sodium hydroxide. So HNO3 is nitric acid plus NaOH. All right, so how do we know what the products of this are going to be? So whenever we have an acid and a base, then we're going to react to form water and a salt. So here's what I'm going to do. We're going to take the H from here and the OH from there, and those two are going to come together to form water, H2O. And then the other two that are going to come together are going to be the NO3 part here and the Na part there. So Na and NO3. So this is where you have to go back to what we did in chapter um, three in terms of writing ionic compounds whenever you have a metal and a non-metal. So in this case, you always write the metal first, so Na and then NO3. So important to keep in mind here is that sodium has a plus one charge and nitrate, NO3, has a minus one charge. So the charges are balanced here. Um, so this one's pretty straightforward. It's HNO3 plus NaOH reacts to form H2O plus NaNO3. Basically, one thing I like to kind of say here is you're going to kind of trade partners. If you imagine your nitric acid, HNO3, separating to an H and then to an NO3, and you imagine your sodium hydroxide separating from a sodium to an O8, separating a sodium and an OH, then you're basically going to trade partners where the positive part from one goes to the negative part of the other. Um, and I'll show that. Uh, again here in this next reaction. So in the one for the bottom, it says, what happens when you have magnesium hydroxide, MgOH2, reacting with HCl? All right, so what is form? Um, so what I was just trying to say with the one up top, let's kind of imagine this one as these MgOH2. We know it's an ionic compound. So ionic compounds can separate, and it's going to form their two ions, which is going to be Mg2+. Plus. The magnesium ion has a plus 2 charge, and it's going to separate into the OH- minus ion. Now, I'm aware that there's two of them here, right? That's okay, because we're going to come back and balance the equation when we need to later. But I'm just saying, what are the two pieces here? One piece is going to be magnesium, and the other piece is going to be the hydroxide ion. Now, if we go to the HCl and we say, what are its two pieces? Well, there's going to be H plus and Cl minus. Now, I know H plus doesn't exist free in solution, but you can kind of just picture it as, like, what are the two pieces? Well, one piece is going to be H plus and the other piece is going to be Cl minus. All right, so now what happens... Whenever this reaction occurs, well, like I said before, you're going to trade partners. So the plus that was over here has to go with a minus. So instead of being with this minus, it's going to go with this minus. So we're going to form this is going to come together with that. All right. And now we have to write the actual ionic compound for magnesium chloride. And it's going to be MgCl, but we need a 2 down there for the chlorine because, again, it has a negative one charge and we have to balance out the charges. So we need to write this as magnesium chloride, MgCl2. And then the other thing that's going to form is going to be water, H2O. So we're going to come over here and now we're going to write water. So again, in this neutralization reaction, we have a base. 
magnesium hydroxide. Remember, anything that has hydroxides are going to be bases. Plus our acid, HCl, hydrochloric acid is our acid. So acid plus a base forms a salt, and a salt being a metal and a nonmetal, plus water. All right? But now we have to go back and we have to balance the equation because if we look at it, we have a Cl2 here. But we only have one chlorine over here. So we have to add a 2 over there. And the other thing I said that was going to be a problem before, remember how we had this OH2? So if we look at it, that's going to actually be where you have two oxygens and two hydrogens. And we just had, now we have two more hydrogens here. So we have a total of four hydrogens and two oxygens which means we also need to add a 2 over there. So this would be your final balanced neutralization reaction. And again, for all of these neutralization reactions where you have an acid and then a hydroxide containing base, you're always going to form a metal and water, and you can use this exact same um, process to figure out the answer. Okay, so... In the previous example, I kind of broke down the acid and the base into the individual parts. And I was doing that partly in preparation for this slide, where it talks about a net ionic equation. So if you ever hear the term net ionic equation, it basically refers to a chemical equation where it shows only the species that actually do something in a reaction. So if you look at this part down here, um, so it takes the reaction of HCl plus NaOH goes to water and sodium chloride. And it writes everything down as your individual ions. So like I did on the previous slide, it separates them. H and then Cl and Na and OH. And then if you come over here, well, water is H2O. It's a covalent molecule, so those two don't separate. They're going to stay together. And then you're going to have Na and Cl minus, Na plus and Cl minus. Well, if you look... Two of those things never change. You had Cl minus over here, and we have a Cl minus over here. And we have an Na plus here, and we have an Na plus here. So even though it looks like something's happening with them, right, NaOH to NaCl, the Na is still really just a sodium ion on both sides. So we call those spectator ions. So these spectator ions, in this case, um, the sodium ion and the chloride ion, can be omitted in what we call a net ionic equation, which just leaves everything else. So in these neutralization reactions with hydroxide bases, your net ionic equation is always going to be H plus plus OH minus, whoops, H plus plus OH minus goes to H2O, All right? So that's how you would write a net ionic equation. All right, so there's a couple... Um, specific cases I want to talk about with these um, acid-base reactions as they, as they relate to bicarbonate bases, so bicarbonate bases. And these ones are a little bit tricky, so usually I tell people if you're having problems keeping up with everything, honestly, I probably wouldn't spend too much time trying to understand this part, because in order to understand this, you really have to understand the stuff we just talked about. Now, if the other stuff makes sense to you, then by all means, make, spend a little time trying to uh, memorize this. And all this really says is that whenever you have an acid-base reaction where you end up forming what's called carbonic acid, which is this H2CO3, H2CO3 is not a stable molecule. So basically, whenever you have carbonic acid that's aqueous and present in water, it doesn't stay that way. And what happens is it immediately breaks down into water and CO2 which is a gas. So whenever you do one of these reactions, like in a chemistry lab or something, you actually see bubbles, right? The bubbles are this carbon dioxide gas that is being made, and it escapes from the solution. Um, so an example of this, if you were to have HCl plus sodium bicarbonate, so hydrochloric acid plus sodium bicarbonate, and you did the thing where you trade places, right? So you have H plus and Cl minus, and you have Na plus, and you have HCO3 minus, the bicarbonate ion, right? That's one of those polyatomic ions from chapter 3 that I said you needed to know, and this is part of the reason why. Um, so remember, once you have those, you're going to trade places. So the plus is going to go with the minus over here. 
and that's going to give us H2CO3. And you're like, well, where's water? Like, I thought we were going H plus OH. Well, we are still forming water. It just so happens that we're going to do the plus charge here with a negative charge here. They're going to trade partners, and it's going to form H2CO3, which immediately degrades or decomposes into H2O plus CO2. And then the other two pieces come together, chloride plus sodium, to form the NaCl that's over there. So your final products, you wouldn't even write this one over here. You would write NaCl plus H2O plus CO2. All right, so again, it's a unique um, situation whenever you have these bicarbonate bases. And bicarbonate bases are actually really important. This is a, one of the main components that helps regulate the pH of our blood. Um, and we're going to talk about um, buffers coming up in uh, another video here shortly. Um, but this bicarbonate makes an important buffer, which helps keep our blood pH right around that 7.4. Um, range where it's supposed to be. So here if you have a carbonate base, so the previous slide talked about a bicarbonate base where we had HCO3, in this case we just have a carbonate base where CO3 2 minus, really the exact same thing happens here. Again you're going to form this carbonic acid which decomposes. So in this case you have your HCl and then calcium carbonate. Um, so again you're going to have H plus and Cl minus here, you're going to have Ca2 plus and CO3 2 minus there. Now we're going to um, take the plus with this one and it's going to go with the minus of this one. We need two hydrogens to balance off the charge over here, so it's going to be H2CO3, which decomposes into water and carbon dioxide. And then you're also going to have your calcium and chloride come together and it's going to form CaCl2 and then you can go through and balance the equation. Um, so again, just keep in mind whenever you do this, anytime you form H2CO3 as a product, you don't really form H2CO3 as a product and instead you form H2O and CO2. Alright, so let's do a practice here. Write the balanced equation for sulfuric acid with sodium bicarbonate. All right, so H2SO4 plus sodium bicarbonate reacts to form. So I'm going to do it the same way that I was just doing it on the previous slide, and that's to say that we're going to have H plus from this one, right? So H2SO4, each of those H's is like a proton that can be donated and SO4, 2 minus, is going to be the anion. That's going to be the polyatomic anion there. And then for sodium bicarbonate, we're going to have sodium, and we're going to have the bicarbonate. So next up, we want to trade partners. So this plus goes with that minus. Since the charges are the same, they're going to come together in a one-to-one -one ratio, which is going to make H... 2CO3. All right, and then you're also going to have the sulfate go with the sodium, and that's going to form Na2 because, again, this has a plus one charge, that has a minus two charge, so we need to balance the charges. So, sodium sulfate. Um, and next thing I want to do is make sure we balance our equation. Um, so again, I have two sodiums over here. I only have one over there, so I'm going to need a two here. And then um, I think that should do it. So I think everything else kind of adds up. Or, no, it doesn't, sorry. Um, because I put the two in front of the um, this one over here, now I have a total of one, two hydrogens, and I have three, four hydrogens there. And I also have two carbonates over here with that too. So the other thing I need to do is add a 2 in front of the H2CO3. Okay, so the final form of this equation would be like this. Now, here's where the trick comes in. We can't leave this as H2CO3. So I'm going to rewrite this instead of writing it with H2CO3. I'm going to rewrite that with water 
and CO2. So I'm going to come down here. Now that I've done it all, I'm going to rewrite the whole entire thing nice and neat. H2SO4 plus 2NAHCO3 reacts to form. And then instead of writing two H2CO3s, each H2CO3 is going to separate into an H2O and a CO2. And then Na2SO4. So that down there would be your final balanced equation. Um, and that would be as hard a reaction as I could possibly give you because there's not only does the carbon, the carbonic acid show up, but there's coefficients and everything else. So if you're able to do this problem, you can really do any problem I give you in terms of writing these acid-base reactions.